Hey, good morning. God bless and go fish, everybody. Charlie Burrett here, and uh, hey, thank y'all for tuning in and watching the YouTube here. And hey, while I'm thinking of it, if you haven't subscribed, please do get your friends to subscribe. Uh, I'm getting close to 5,000 subs on this thing, and once I do, I, I'll give away another uh, one of those ACC crappie sticks. But anyway, I'm back over here in East Texas. I'm on little old Indian Lake that uh, me and Miss Pam like to go to. Uh, we, in fact, we were out here a couple of days ago and she just wore them big Texas slabs out. I call this our our little uh, East Texas Indian Lake uh, because, well, I have some Indian in me. My great-grandmother, uh, man, she, she had a lot of Indian in her. So out of, uh, in honor of her, uh, I like to call this lake here, uh, Lake um, No Can Tell. Uh, I no can tell you where it is because hey, you know everybody. Everybody has to have that one little special spot that you go to. And hey, I've got some wonderful friends. I love them to death. But there, there's something about uh, you know you can take somebody to your to your fishing hole and tell them don't man promise on your mama's grave you know that you won't you won't tell anybody and they'll promise evidently they didn't love their mama but uh anyway all joking aside i'm back out here today and i'm gonna try to do a lot I'm, I, a lot of y'all have asked uh, how i get my settings my live scope so clear uh try to go through some of that for you um also uh there's some oh i did the latest download got a couple of interesting things that uh, popped up after that that I'll share with you. Hopefully, catch some two-pound Texas slabs. Um, before I get to that, though, got to tell you something happened to me yesterday. You know it's story time. But yesterday, I stopped by my, uh, my, my wife's office she uh, she still works she's like a lot of you guys she's gainfully employed and thank you jesus for you guys because you're keeping my social security funded i've already paid into it and paid it up but hey the way the government's spending that money y'all need to keep it funded for me but i uh, stopped by her office and uh in the parking lot was this uh truck where they do they come out to your work site and they change change the oil in your vehicle and so the business next door, uh, he was over there, the truck was over there servicing some of their vehicles. And uh, anyway, as I walked past the truck, uh, dude come around, man, this guy, he was a huge dude. I talked, he was, he was NFL huge, much of a man. And uh, man, I was just kind of admiring his stature, you know, and I looked at me, looked at him, God. God, why didn't you give me some of him? But, uh, you know, this big old man, he come around his truck, and this bumblebee come comes out of nowhere, gets up in his face, and this big guy, man, he's freaking out. He's, he's trying to get away from this bumblebee, and the bee zipped up in front of his face and just kind of looking at him, and I reached out, and I tried to grab him, missed him and I, he thought I caught him I thought I caught him for a second and he looked at me he said you're a bad man I said, I said no sir I'm an old man I said but with an old man all this white you know the Bible says that uh, white hair is a sign of wisdom so I guess I'm, I'm getting pretty smart here in my old age but I told him I said I'm just an old wise man and he was like man I can't believe you tried to catch that bee, and about that time he came back, and I swatted at him, and I, man, I just barely missed him again. I so wish I could have caught that bee. Really impressed the guy even more. But he was just taken, taken back. He just could not believe what he was seeing. And uh, I told him, I laughed. I said, and a lot of you guys, a lot of you old guys like me, we came up, we had to make our own entertainment, so you know, you know what was going on. But this was a, I explained to him, I said, Buddy, I said, this uh I'm not as bad as you think. I said, I'm old and uh I may be dumb, but I, I'm not stupid. 
I said, that bee right there. I said, and when he comes back, and by the time the bee came back, I said, look, look at his face. He's got a white face. If he's got that little white dot on his nose, I said, that is a drone, a male bee. He has no stinger. I said, he looks like he's a bee, but he has no stinger. He, I said, he won't hurt you. He did not know. He was so he was so impressed that he, he learned something new. And, and then that led into story time. And I told him, I said, you know, for entertainment, when I was a kid, me and my three brothers, we would catch those white-faced bees. And I said, we would tie string, try, tie thread to their legs and fly them around like a little kite. Man, that was entertaining. And, until we went in the house with it, my mama, my mama didn't think it was entertaining. Mama didn't like bees and something else she didn't like. She did not like lizards. I remember one day, and I, I, I told this young man, I, his name's Buck. I told Buck, I said, uh, one day I caught two of those big green lizards. I made them open their mouth, and I hung one on each earlobe. I had one of those white faced bees already caught and, and thread tied to his leg. So I come I come in the back door of the house there and uh, I went hunting for mama. And when I found my mother and I came walking up to her flying that that bee toward her with those two lizards hanging off my ears. Oh, she just that's one of the few times I've seen my mama totally freaked out that she wasn't, she was, she, she was mad, but she was more scared. And you know when mama calls you by that middle name, Charles Thomas, I knew I was in trouble, but I knew I wasn't in trouble because I had all the defense I needed. So I'm chasing mama through the house, she's hollering. And you know, mama could put a smack on me. She, mama would beat me down, she could hit me so hard. But, uh, and she was swatting, but she was swatting like, like this. She wasn't swatting, she wasn't coming at me like that. She was, it was self-defense. Buck got a kick out of that story. I got a kick out of sharing it with him. And we talked, man, we, st we stood out in that parking lot and we talked for probably 15, 20 minutes, sharing stories uh, about childhood and our life. And uh, I told him, I said, well, I need, Bucking. I know you need to get back to work. I need to get on in the office there and check on the wife. And uh, I said, I'm so glad that, you know, that Bumblebee came up and, and gave us an opportunity to open up a conversation. And I said, hasn't this been fun? We have been laughing, cutting up like we've known each other forever. He said, oh, Mr. Charlie, he said, I, it's great. He said, that's me. He said, I love, he said, man, I love life. I love people. And, you know, I, I told him, I, oh, his motto, he, I, Buck, I know you're probably going to watch this, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use your motto. Buck says that, uh, he said, don't cheat yourself, treat yourself. I said, say that again, Buck, I like that. He said, don't cheat yourself. Mr. Charlie, treat yourself. I like that. That's that's going to be in my repertoire from now on. But uh, you know, like Buck said, uh, he made the comment. He said, "Man, what 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 a world this would be if everybody could be like we were that yesterday, just enjoying each other's company and stories and laughing. Laughter doeth good like a medicine." But we sat out there and. And, but you know what, like Buck, Buck said, um, don't cheat yourself, treat yourself. So I'm going to say to you guys today and to me, uh, hey, let's don't cheat ourselves. If we get out on the lake, like today, I'm out here, and the wind, I, I need to be fishing right now because it's, it's, it's strong and it's, it's fixing to really pick up. But uh, I won't be able, it's going to cheat me out of fishing where I want to fish, where the big, where I, I know there's some two pounders. But I'm not going to let myself be cheated. I'm going to treat myself. I'm going to treat myself to exploring some new water and have fun doing it. You know, don't cheat yourself out of striking up a conversation with that stranger. Don't cheat yourself out of making a new friend because of the world, because social media, because the news tells us, man, y'all are different 
and there's there's never going to be any harmony between you people. Uh, it's just not going to happen. Man, don't listen to that. Don't let it cheat you. Treat yourself. Make that step. Strike up a conversation with that stranger. You know, let that let that bumblebee come up and be a conversation starter for you. I'm telling you, it's going to be a treat. You're going to love it. But most importantly of all, most importantly, man, let's don't cheat ourselves out of heaven. Let's don't cheat ourselves out of life, out of eternal life. I like to tell everybody, my saying is, I'm going to die living. I'm going to die living. You know, I hope, I hope, I think it's everybody, so... Uh, that when death comes to me, and there's a lot more sand in the bottom of my hourglass than in the top, I can tell you that. But uh, I hope death comes as a surprise to me, and it comes quickly. Uh, I don't like pain. I've been through all the pain I want to, but, you know, God God is, is the one that will orchestrate that, and I'm good with it. I'm good with it. But um, I don't know when my expiration date is going to be. I've looked all over this body. You know, you go to the store, pick up some milk, a loaf of bread, whatever. Got that little expiration date or best if used by. Well, you know, yes, there's an expiration date on us. God said that for every man there's an appointed time. But the good thing is he doesn't have one of those best if used by because I firmly believe that God wants to use us uh, till we take that last breath. And that's that's my hope. Uh, that's my treat is to uh, share the good news with people through a YouTube channel, Catching Fish. And we're going to catch some fish today, God willing. I believe we are. I've already asked for him to give us favor with these fish. But um, anyway, uh, don't cheat yourself. Treat yourself. God bless y'all. Hey, man, uh, you know, I think the weatherman... He might have been he might have been wrong. It's kind of laying down out here. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, all right, we're gonna get out here, see what we can do. Uh, try to get some pictures of some good catches on the live scope, go through menu settings, all that, like I said. But anyway, let's go fish. I don't know. I, I I'm I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna pass. That's not really what I like. What I like to fish. Y'all know what I like. I like those boat art trees or a straight tree with one or two fish on it. Let's see if we can find one of those. The brush piles are safe with me. I don't like a brush pile. I don't really care for a lay down. Lay down right there with some smaller fish on it. We look at I'm looking for a tree like this with one fish. I've got that cornfield sweep. I'm just uh, kind of steering into the wind and I'm running the uh, that little noise you hear is that foot control on the uh, cornfield. I'm just panning uh, from left to right about 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Searching. Cornfield, I like it. It allows me to be hands-free. A couple of fish here, but they're downwind, so I need to circle around come back into the wind they don't look that big but so I kind of want to get that first fish in the boat I always get nervous every trip until I, I get two or three feet Two or three feet, two or three fish in the boat, and get my feet wet, settle down, see what the fish want, kind of get a pattern going. Now, if 
got my screen in to 20 feet. I start out at 60, 65 feet. I'm looking around, and when I see something, I ease up to it. I'm 14 feet away from these fish. I don't know how spooky they're gonna be. I like to get it 10 feet before I hit the brakes. trouble getting getting in position here. We'll get it here in a minute. would be a little bigger than this. He may be on the back side of the tree. I like to hold my rod tip up until I get the fish and my jig both on, on target. Now you can see I've kind of drifted back a little bit. So I'm just going to troll a little bit up to the fish. Now I'll drop down to him. Hey, like I said, I don't like to catch that first fish. Bad luck. I'm going to be adjusting my, right now, I'm just adjusting the gain a little bit. I've got it on uh, 57. I usually run 56 to 63, 64, something like that. See if he'll hit again. Come on, fish, give me a second chance. Come on, one more time. Take it from him. There we go. Give me that second chance, didn't you, bud? He's just a keeper. Nothing special. start with.
keep myself honest. One down, 24 to go. I don't ever get tired of seeing that. Man. Alright, where's my jig? I don't like to drop until I see that jig. There it is. Oh, I got a fish. He kind of come off the tree. up here. Boat's kind of spinning around here. Still can't hold that shoulder out, that arm out too long. Shoulder still got some mending to do. Come on, come on, buddy. TV adds a couple of pounds to them, makes them look, look, look bigger. Now that fish, if you noticed, when he started following the bait, he was uh, he would not bite <laughs> until I sped up the uh, the retrieve, and he <clears throat> he thought, <clears throat> excuse me, he thought that bait was getting away. 
little things like that will mean the difference in, you know, getting the fish to bite and coming home telling everybody that they would follow it, peck on it, that they wouldn't bite. Start changing things up. I don't look like much right here, but watch as I see he's still 40 feet out, but watch these fish, watch these fish grow as I get closer. that one in between the fork right there. following those fish. Got squirreled around there. That old fish was behind the tree, so he's come out now. Oh, come on. Wind, let me, let me get out some slipped away. here if y'all can see it. This boat's moving around so much and I'm gonna have to troll into this fish. If I can fight this wind enough. Come 
Uh, come on, fish. I can't stretch out anymore. Trying to keep him in view. Now I've lost my jig. goes. There he goes. Had to work for him. Always a fighter. Good fish. Oh, that chick fell out. I'm just using a little, I call it gray ghost, just a little silver. Ray and a black tail. Nice fish. Had to work for him though, didn't I? You know this live scope is uh, it's an awesome tool. People call and different questions, but I guess some some of the best advice I can I can give you guys is just uh, slow it down. You know, uh, don't rush it. It's uh, it'll come. Kind of like to say, you got to walk before you can run, crawl before you can walk. And, uh, just take your time. Speed will come. I mean, I've caught thousands of fish in this thing, but I still get squirrels around. I see how, how hard I had to work on that fish. Uh, but, you know, factor in the wind and the boat moving around and trying to keep everything on screen. A lot of times, I just, uh, you know, if I'm just fishing, I know the vicinity of the fish. I'll just drop down in there and wait for the thump. seen some more but they were behind the boat so I'm letting it drift back I fish is only six foot deep I can't really tell I, I don't I don't know sometimes these fish fool me can't tell if he's a Big fish. See one one good one in there. Right here. Now the wind moved around and I'm on top of it. Let's see what this is all about. He ought to hit pretty quick.
to get him interested here. That other one, that second one, he likes it. Here he comes. Yeah, he wanted it. I saw him. Too. He might be a little shy. He's a good fish, though. Catching these fish on this new ACC crossover, 12 foot crossover, and uh, Tell you what, I showed it in a previous video, but the balance point on this thing is just crazy. Now I've got a Alma jigs in the water, but you put that reel, I can't do it with the wind and all, but this thing will balance out about about right, about right here. So you've got a 12 foot rod, all the weight positioned at the rear. Just makes it real easy to handle on an all day trip. Looks like a decent fish right here. Gosh, he wants it served up on a platter. Come on, please. Right there, come on. Ready to call that guy a catfish the way he kept moving around. Ah, he made me work. It's a good fish though. That fish was, uh, I'll have to go back and look, but I think he was about one foot from the troll motor when I caught him. That fish right there, 35 feet out. His boat turned around. This is only six feet deep. I'm at 20 plus feet of water. Just fishing this uh, standing timber here. There's lots of brush piles, but I, 
I don't like rust piles, man. There, I used to fish them all the time, but man, they're just jig stealers for me. That fish there will bite. You see a fish like that, he's gonna bite. I can cast out that far because there's nothing to really get hung up on. Hopefully he, he'll take a drive by. Alright, come on, I gotta get you on camera now. I gotta pull it back up. I can't. I don't wanna catch that fish. Not have him on camera. Can't see my jig. There it is. All right. What I'm gonna do? A situation like this. I'm gonna I'm gonna run my footage out to 25 feet. That's gonna enable me to get a get my jig in sight. Get it lined up. and looking at me, I won't do this. Need him to turn sideways. He might be right here, I'm not sure. See my jig, but the fish is moving, so I know he sees my jig. I'm bringing a steady retrieve. There he is. He hit the tree. He was on it, but I drug it into the tree. So no, no harm yet. He, he still ain't on to me. I'm a jig. Where's my jig? Where's my jig? Too low. Bring it up. Right there.
There it is. Come here, bud. Oh, come here. Don't you get off. Please don't get off. Oh, my gosh. That's a solid fish right there now. Ow. That big boy right here. He, uh, boy, I love those white crappie. They're so pretty. This fish right here, hopefully I got all that on camera. He followed that, uh, that gray ghost, but he, uh, he just wouldn't, wouldn't commit. Of course, part of it may have been the jig hit that tree, but, uh, you saw how I tried two or three times set up on him. You know, if the fish is not looking real aggressive, I change colors and put a more flashy of silver. It was a silver hand tie with a chartreuse tail. And that little bit of difference made, man, that change made all the difference. Uh, that fish, you saw it, he attacked that thing. I'll catch another one. All right, you know all good things must come to an end. 25, um, I had just enough battery left on that troll motor to catch two more fish. And what a good couple of fish to end on. A 2-1 and a 2-2-4. Oh, and, two, two, and I had him on here. Golly. I am falling in love, Andy Lemon. I'm falling in love with that, uh, that rear seat 12 foot. That thing is easy on the old man's shoulder. Got some good fish in here. Kept a, mm. hope that's his blood, not mine. Good fish are mean, these Texas fish are mean.